In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Christ is in our midst. This past week, we celebrated St. Innocent's Feast Day, and today we celebrate Patriarch Tikhon's Feast Day, and these are two prominent saints uh, for the North American Church, uh, Apostles to America. Both of them have the title of Apostles to America. Both of them served as bishops in the United States. And uh, today I'm going to speak on on, uh, Patriarch Tikhon. And I have to set up a little bit of a historical concept for or con- uh, context. Many people don't know this, but the interplay between government, politics, and, and church is, is rather interesting historically. One of the things Orthodox have always been accused of is Caesaropapism, which is this idea that we oftentimes historically are accused of allowing the government to put the church in a subservient position, and that oftentimes the government dictates the church's position on things. Well, there's some truth to the accusation, and of course there's a context of the accusation too. In other words, there's a a Christian understanding as to why people allowed this to happen. Some modern theologians consider it a tragedy, like Father Alexander... Alexander Schmemann, and some see it as simply the Christian faith, which is that God puts leaders in charge, and who wouldn't want their leader to be the Christian leader of the, of the world? You would want your leader to be your czar, your emperor, to be Christian and to support the church. Anyways, in Russia, around uh, St. Peter the Great um, was a great reformer, And one of his reformations of the Orthodox Church in Russia was that he did away with the Patriarchate. And this was in the 1700s. And in the place of the Patriarchate, he placed a synod. And a synod that was run by what was called, an I'll probably get it wrong, but an Oberprokator. Procurator. Anyways, I knew I'd get it wrong. Um... Anyways, in placing this this, uh, personality, which at times was very friendly to the church, but served on the synod, but oftentimes was not very friendly. And the, the, the czars could appoint bishops. They could meddle within the church's affairs. And the church lived in that state for 300 years. For 300 years, at, at various levels, politics of the nation of Russia at the time played into the church and, in many ways, subverted the church. Now, Patriarch Tikhon was elected the first patriarch in 300 years, in 1917. And as you know from history, 1917 and 18 and and even earlier than that are very tumultuous years within Russia. This is during the time of the revolution. This is the time when... Uh, right, before, right after Tsar Nicholas has been murdered with his family. And we see a nation that is in total political upheaval, that's transitioning from one system to another by force, by blood, by persecution. And in the midst of this, you know, there are the people in the church who are practicing the old ways, who are living the faith. And how does the new world encounter the old world? How does a new government encounter the church, which has such a strong impression upon the people? And we see within the Russian Revolution that gradually it becomes more atheistic and gradually it tries to annihilate the church in Russia. And the personalities of the people uh, become very important of that time. And this is why St. Uh, Patriarch Tikhon is celebrated. First of all, for his holiness and for the fact that he's the first patriarch in 300 years. And his holiness is widely attested to. But also because he guided the, the church through a very perilous time in a Christian way, and very most, most importantly, 
in a Christian way. St. Tikhon was raised, he was a priest's son. He was noted for his piety. At a very, uh, when he went to seminary, uh, one of the jokes that his friends would tease him with is they call him bishop because it was noted that he was very pious and quiet. When you read his life, you'll hear that he was meek. Uh, the word tikon itself means gentle and meek. He was generous. He was loving. He was easy to be around. He was unshakable. His serenity was always in place, even in the midst of turmoil. He, people who knew everybody in the government who were around him would experience peace from him. It seemed that he was always at peace, even in the midst of the great persecutions. And these are things that developed from his childhood into his adulthood. Eventually he was made a monk, and eventually he was sent to the U.S. In the U.S. he, he consecrated altars, he founded churches, he was one of the, he, um, I believe he laid the cornerstone in New York for one of the uh, cathedrals when they moved the um, chancery from San Francisco to New York. At one of the churches I visited, and I cannot remember what town, it was a very small town, Pennsylvania, but it was this tiny church and they had this huge altar in this little small space. And uh, what I was told when I got there is that that was one of the altars he consecrated. I believe he consecrated the altar in Oliphant. And this is someone who was only 100 years ago, really, for us. This is, you know, he was alive 100 years ago. This is not that far away. Well, anyways, he uh, initiated the first translations into English of the liturgy. He taught and was beloved by the clergy everywhere he went, whether it was in the U.S. or in Russia. He had a falling, and not only by the clergy, but also the laity, great great. Lots of people gathered around him. And it was all given to the fact that when they're around him, they experience Christ, because in the end, it's all about Christ. And that's what Bishop Tikhon, Patriarch Tikhon, was all about, was Christ. So when the election comes about, when they finally get together and decide that they're going to reinstate the patriarch, they put a bunch of names, they have an election, as you'd expect, and they put all the the highest names, the ones with the most votes into the chalice or the a bowl, and they pick it out, and, and Patriarch Tikhon wins. And he immediately, in his speech, you can see very clearly that he knows that this is a crucifixion, that this is not a time where one would want to be the patriarch. Because the choices were to either unite with the government, which was committing all sorts of atrocities, or to stand true to the church. Now, in the midst of this, it's not just that there's the government and the church. The communists of that time propped up another church organization. There was this group called the Living Church. And the Living Church was a, a, a church that was seeking reforms within the Russian church, particularly dealing, for some of them, with married priesthood and married uh, bishops. And then also there was other things like being on a different calendar. And many of these living church uh, were connected to the government. As a matter of fact, the living church was in filled, in, um, I'm having trouble with words today, was filled with government operatives at one point. And so what you had was you had not only Patriarch Tikhon, who was elected canonically according to to the canons to be the patriarch, the new patriarch, after 300 years of absence. But you also have a, another church that is seeking recognition, that is, seek, that is persecuting him, and trying to work with the authorities who are in favor of this other church to somehow subvert Christianity and change it. And to change it back to what it had been at sometimes, which was subservient to the government, another mouthpiece of the government, the government which is, of course, radically changing and murdering souls. It was in the midst of this that Patriarch Tikhon goes to prison, and yet in the midst of this he speaks out, he stands up, he writes against the government of the time, he encourages his priests not to get into politics at all, and 
what he writes when he speaks out against the government, he's specifically speaking out against their atrocities. He's not taking sides. He's not with the whites or the reds. He's simply speaking Christian truth. Well, anyways, it said that he died of a heart attack. Some people believe he died from being poisoned. And the history will never know. Uh, as a matter of fact, the will that came out after he died was, um, is said to be clearly a forgery because in his will there was all, this, um, all these things saying about the new government, how great it was. Um, the government at times, uh, I forgot to mention this, but the government at times actually would try to steal from the churches. That was one of the things that he spoke out about. And of course, closed down churches and monasteries and everything else. St. Tikhon, we venerate St. Tikhon, and he is a saint for our time in many ways. We live in a time of political upheaval in the U.S. and, in, and around the world. And what it really calls for is Christian leadership. That Christian leadership can be at the head of a country, which we always hoped that it would be. That Christian leadership can be at the head of the church, which I think that we are blessed to have Metropolitan Tikhon, who's named after Bish uh, Patriarch Tikhon, to be at the head of our church. But it also could be the priests, of course, but it filters down to everybody ultimately. That whenever a country or a system, a governmental system or a society begins to decay, eventually there will be a challenge. There are already persecutions, small persecutions in our country, but we never know when they may give way to great persecutions. As it stands now, our bishops are not imprisoned. As far as we know, no one has been martyred uh, specifically. It's a, more of an intellectual fight or a fight for the heart and soul of a nation. But there may come a time, and now is the time to prepare for that time. And how we prepare is the same way that Bishop Tikhon prepared. Ultimately, it's by living the Christian life. And it doesn't sound that exciting. It's, it's not that dramatic. There's no secret code. There's no special prayer rule that I can give you that's going to make it, you know, easy. It's about day-to-day -day practicing of the commandments. It's about becoming holy people. It's about praying daily, working, reading the scriptures, and doing what we can to be sanctified, to become Christ-like. If there's any reason why we actually venerate Bishop the Patriarch Tikhon, it's because he was a Christian. He was a Christian in the position he was in. He was a Christian in the face of all the temptations and the pushings and the pullings of his age. Yet he was a Christian, and what the word we use for that is that he was a confessor. He held to the faith under extreme pressure. Now we never know when we'll be held to that same account. But may God bless us to study his life, to seek the kingdom of heaven first, so that if we encounter times that are perilous with dramatic change in politics or whatever it may be, that we may, at the end of our lives, that people may see and look at us and say, you know, no matter what was going on, they were Christian. They honored God, they honored Christ in the midst of this chaos. And even in the midst of this chaos, they kept their serenity. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Christ is in our midst.